Good afternoon and welcome back to the workshop. In this video I'm going to hopefully finish off machining the bogey assembly and hopefully get started on the axles and wheels. I have a question for you as the viewers, that is what livery you'd like to see this model in. So my original thought was to go with the earliest livery they appeared in, which is a chocolate brown with gold lining. I think it looks beautiful and very elegant, Edwardian, 1911-ish. Um, I think that looks great and I'm I'm pretty certain that's what I'm going to go with. But what has occurred to me is I can also paint it in British rail lined black, which is all over black with white and red pinstripes. I think that looks pretty attractive too. And what's really attractive is that there's these malachite green, it's like really strong emerald green color coaches that can go behind it. And I can buy a kit of one of those. I can go to um, Walsall Model Industries or Kippo Models and buy a kit for a, a gauge three Mark I coach and paint it in that green color. And I'll have a, a coach and a locomotive. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna go on that one, but if you have any views, I'd love to hear them. Uh, anyway, with that said, let's get on with the machining. What you can see here is the bogey stretcher and the two steel bogey frames. And this is just a piece of rod I've stuck in, stuck in this little slot just to confirm that they are indeed parallel and it's a nice fit. I'm really pleased. They're quite straight and in with each other. There's no bow leggedness. I was a little concerned, but what it turned out was there was a, uh, a burr on the inside faces here, which was pushing the top out and the bottom in. But as you can see, that's nice and straight. Um, here we go, just another quick view. I'm quite pleased about how we managed to get this across the frames because that was dialed, that wasn't uh, measured. I, I dialed down uh, the correct uh, recess for this buffing plate here, which then made that the right height based on the thickness of the stretchers. So um, although <clears throat> there's a lot of maths involved with the dials and going in one direction only, um, I'm, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out at least. The next step is to drill some holes uh, for through the steel frame into the stretcher and then tap them uh, for bolts to bolt this together. This is how I'm going about uh, <clears throat> holding the bogey stretcher and the frame for drilling. I've got a machinist clamp here, which is now in the machine vise, and I'm using a, uh, a parallel, so a right angle, uh, to uh, to get that nice and flat there. That looks like it could do a little bit of adjustment, uh, but that's generally how I'm going to do it. And then just drill down into those spotted holes there, and uh, see how we go. If you're wondering why there's not much footage of uh, this drilling operation, it's because almost all of it looks exactly like this, i.e. Very difficult to see and not actually a huge amount to look at. I've drilled the first hole, now I'm drilling the one in the rear. I've got my handy magnifying glass to make sure I do it straight. I'm going to repeat that on the bottom side then tap these holes and countersink the uh, top bits here. So I'll get on with that and get back to you. Well, that's, uh, that felt like a bit of an odyssey, but we got there in the end. The, uh, the next step is to take these back off, drill some transverse holes into this uh, slot here on the, on the stretcher. And then I think that's it. Those are the two transverse holes done. This bogey stretcher is now, as far as we're concerned for machining, complete. Finally. 
you know those tests you might have had as a kid where there's like 10 questions and question one says read the whole thing and question 10 says don't actually do any of the questions just sit down with your thumb up or something uh, i would definitely fail that test leave the axle holes until the next stage that's these axle holes in the equalizers and in the next stage which is not on this piece of paper it says to draw drill them to a loose running fit uh, and uh, obviously I have reamed them to exactly the right size, so I will need to remount and drill the equalizers. As an aside, uh, one of the things that most vintage machine shop users seem to have a problem with is finding uh, the right lubricants. Uh, back in the day the prescription was for, for oils and lubricants which were very common, nowadays slightly less so. So I found a website called Lube Finder, which sounds horrible, make sure you tell your missus uh, if you've ordered from them before a big package comes up marked Lube Finder. Uh, and this uh, is Mobile DTE Oil Heavy and it is a replacement for Shell Vitria 41, which is an ISO 100 heavy oil, uh, which is used for the vertical head on the Centec, apparently. And this was about nine pounds. And you can buy other equivalents on eBay uh, for about 25 pounds, but it's five liters. And although the, the vertical head on the Centec does leak a little, I don't think it leaks enough to justify five liters at this stage. So um, I'll let you know how I go with this, certainly. Um, it looks the same in terms of its color and consistency. Um, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll hopefully give you some feedback on this one soon. <laughs> 